So I got some questions, and I want to make sure that uh, you guys know that we're here to answer any of your questions. So we want to go on live. This is something we're going to be doing every Thursday at 5 o'clock Eastern Time, and we're here to answer questions. Anything you have about real estate investing, how we do it, how we get along, which is not well, but <laughs> as we... As <laughs> depends much, on the day. Depends on the day. <laughs> but, um, you know, I... Uh, we want whatever questions you guys want answered. We want to be able to be open and live and answer questions for you. So, uh, those of you guys who don't come to our workshops, uh, you know, you can certainly learn stuff there too. But this is more interactive. You can ask questions and we can we can go from there. Uh, Michael, you said, what's it like going from in person to digital? That's a great question. So again, uh, welcome all you guys who are joining us. We're just doing a live Q and A. And if you have any questions at all, please put them right in the chat box about. Real estate investing, uh, we'd love to answer any questions that you have for us, and we're going to be doing this live every Thursday at 5 o'clock. So, Eastern Time. What's it like going from person on, in person to digital for the home play workshops? It was scary. I can tell you that. When we first started that, it was really scary. Although it, we, it wound up being one of the best things we ever did. We have actually able to reach a whole, lot, a whole lot more people virtually because, well, people can come to our workshops without having to buy a plane ticket. And ironically, right now they can't travel. So, but they come. They come to our workshops all over the country, all over the world. People. Yeah, and we were really nervous about um, how people would respond to that. As far as you know, are they going to feel like? Are we going to get to know them? Are they going to get to know us and kind of our flavor and what we're like? But what we found was that it works. You know, you can actually connect with people digitally and through Zoom and still get to know each other and still have that really family feel and. Yeah. It, it worked really well, but it was a lot of work getting it done because there were a lot of things we kind of had to transfer over from like on paper to in person and, and also to make the workshops um, very interactive um, so that people, you know, because three days on Zoom can feel like a long time. Yeah. But when the information is really valuable and really good, it just made the makes the days fly by and people were just like really engaging and taking part and getting a lot of value out of it. What we, what we found, I think we found when our flipping company had to go virtual too, I'm sorry. Yeah. Our flipping company had to go virtual too. We were already trying to figure out how to take our employees and have them work from home. We were already in our mind. We're thinking we're going to outgrow this office here. We have to get bigger. So how are we going to do that? So we were already thinking that literally I was about two months into the process when COVID hit. So that, fast tracked our plan big time right so that was that was crazy but the fast tracked our plan and um when people were home we actually hired some employees over zoom so i never met those employees except for over zoom what i found very interesting was when we had our when we had a, a live event we actually had a pool party at our house don't tell the governor. We had a live pool party this summer at our house with about 10 people. So, But we had our team come over. We actually met some employees that came to our house that we only knew through Zoom. And you know what? It wasn't that different. It was cool. It wasn't that different. It was so strange that it was like they weren't totally foreign to us. And it, what we learned is that we all communicate a very different way, right? We all communicate. Um, it's like 58% nonverbal. So facial expressions, body you know, language. body language, that's a big part of how we communicate. Only 7% is voice. So if you only met somebody over the phone, that's only 7% of you getting to know them. But when you, when you see it, like you see us live, like you see our reactions, you see if I'm excited or if I'm pissed or you can see everything when we're talking. So you get to know somebody. So when you meet them in person, if you meet somebody over the phone, like if you meet them in person, you've only known them on the phone, over the phone, that's very strange. But if you meet that same person who you've spent six months or three months on Zoom, it's not that different. Within a couple minutes, you're like, oh, that's what you smell like. Oh, that's what you feel like. Good, okay. And then you move on, you know? It, are that's you the, smelling people? I'm not really smelling people. That's kind of weird, but I don't know. <laughs> what yeah. are you doing? Well, those are those senses that we have. Yeah, that did sound weird, right? Yeah. So, I don't really smell my employees <laughs> or touch them. Just so we're, let me make sure I'm very clear. I'm on Facebook Live, so I want to make sure. So, But but that's as far as the home flipping workshop goes. But we're finding that we're able to even do a lot of real estate transactions via Zoom or FaceTime. Yes. You know, we're, we're contacting Technology. buyers that way. And, you know, with COVID, you can't go in their houses. Um, so, you know, they can actually walk us around their house so we oh, can sorry. see, we can see, am I done? Am I done talking? You're just yeah, she's all done. It's screen? just me now. It's just me. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. So, um, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of real estate transactions that way, which is also really cool. I'm even able to design that way. Cause even after we, even after we purchase the house, my project manager will go in the house and FaceTime me and walk me through the house and I can yeah. make my design choices yeah. without ever setting foot in the house. Hey, I want to welcome all of you new people who have joined us. So, uh, Glenn and Amber Schwarm, and we are here to 
Uh, answer any questions you guys have about flipping in any way, shape, or form. We're doing this every Thursday. Uh, we didn't do it last Thursday. It was Thanksgiving. But every Thursday, this doesn't fall on a holiday, a major holiday. We'll be here to answer <laughs> questions for you for about 30 minutes. And you can get to know us. So Portia, uh, love that name, by the way, has a question. What is the minimum cash someone would need to try to flip for the first time? Here's my answer. Portia, you still there? Here we go. Ready? None. So you don't need any cash to flip houses for the first time or the second time or the 700th time. You have to have access to cash. There's a big difference there. I want you to hopefully you understand that part. Hopefully I'm, I'm making, not that you wouldn't understand. Hopefully I'm making it clear. You have to have cash to buy a house, but it doesn't have to be your cash, right? Just like maybe the last time you bought a car or any big purchase. Maybe you bought a big purchase on your credit card for a Christmas gift. That wasn't your money if you put it on the credit card, was it? You, you have to pay it back, but you borrowed it from the bank that issued that credit card. If you bought a car, same difference. You borrow money from a bank that lent you the money to buy that car. When you bought a house, you may have put some money down, you may not have put some money down, but you borrowed money from somebody else, a bank. Well, the cool thing is the same exact thing happens when you're flipping houses, except it's easier to borrow money on, on real estate to flip because it's a hard asset. People don't mind, get, like when you use your credit card, that's unsecured. And te technically speaking, the, the bank can't take anything away from you, right? If you buy a, I don't know what you buy, a hot tub on your, on your credit card, they can't come take that, hot, that away from you, right? It's, on the, it's unsecured. But on a piece of real estate, you can do that. So we teach how to use private money to do that. And there's a lot of lenders, if you know where to look, that will loan money on deals. So you don't, you know, if you want to have some cash, you should have some cash, but if you have none, there's ways to get this thing done without using any of your own cash. So I hope that answers your question. And those are the two biggest things that pe that hold people back from getting into uh, real estate investing are lack of money and lack of knowledge. The lack of money is pretty easily solvable when you use other people's cash. Yeah. And that we, so, so I think you understand this. We still use other people's cash today. Yeah. We, we're, on, we're on 700 plus flips and we have a, an investor bank of about $5 million in, in private lender funds that we've built over the years. We teach our students in our workshops how to do all that, but we've built that over the years. That's the money that we have access to, to flip houses. And we just roll that over and over and over. So, you know, we buy a house, renovate it, sell it, and then the you know, investor makes their percentage off of that. And then we take that same cash and roll it over into the next house. Right. We may take our money and lend that out to other investors, right? We make, we can make more money on that, uh, more money on our own money, if that makes sense. So it's kind of, kind of great how that does. So, um, saw, saw called nay. I hope I'm saying that right. How is flipping start to finish? That's a very general question. <laughs> that's a very big, yeah, yeah. That, that's a, a broad umbrella. How is the whole process going to finish a deal? So, how is the process from start to finish? You know, um, every job is a little bit different. You know, it, it depends on the scope of work. You know, there's there are some jobs that go really simply and don't you don't you know they're they're cosmetic jobs. They don't need a lot of work. But then there's other houses that need everything from you know foundation and siding and windows and furnace and you know so it really depends on the house and what is needed to be done on the house. You know, for someone that's brand new, we don't recommend getting into something too major. Um, you know, we want you to kind of dip your toe in the water and do something more simple at first, even if the profit margin may not be quite as high. It might be, but it might not be. Yeah. Um, but, you know, get a little experience under your belt before you tackle anything huge. That's a, Yeah, that's a very good point. You know, you want to be careful. You know, it, here's the big thing. I think when it, once you've bought a house, as long as you bought it right, we always teach our students that it, you make your money when you buy a house, right? That's when you make your money. You realize that money when you sell that house. And if you've managed the process correctly, the, the better you manage the process, the more money you can put in your pocket. So again, so it's a, it's a, it's a loaded question to say, you know, what, how is the whole process? But it's, it takes work. I want to make sure that you know that. Like we, we preach that over and over at our workshops to our students. And we let you know that um, uh, it's, it takes hard work. What we do is hard work, but it's worth it. That's a common theme that we tell everyone that comes. They say, wow, it looks so easy on TV. That's because it's TV. That's not real. They call it reality TV, but it's not real. It's not, re it's not real. It's when you, you know, flip a house in 30 minutes, that's not what it takes. It takes 30 days, 45 days. It takes 60 days. It takes time and work. But listen, anything you're going to do in life that can net you $50,000 for two months worth of work or a month worth of work or six months worth of work, whatever it is, is it worth it? 
I don't know. To, to me, that's worth it. Yeah, one of our big mottos is it's not easy, but it is worth it. You know, you, totally. is, is going to your job every day from nine to five easy? No. no. You have, you know, your life to schedule around it. If you've got kids and family and school and, you know, your own doctor's appointments yeah. or whatever, you know, it, it's not easy, but it's a means to an end. And with flipping houses and being being a real estate investor, you're just doing it for yourself instead of somebody else. Portia has a follow-up question. Would you finance the full amount? Yeah, Portia. So we, we definitely, <coughs> going back to the finance question, let me just take one second and just let everybody know who just joined us. Thanks for joining us on here. It's Glenn and Amber. We're here to answer any questions you have about real estate investing. Fire away. Put it in the chat box. No questions, a dumb question. Um, try and stump us. I'd like you to try and stump us. Give it a whirl, right? We could, we've been through thousands of, of transactions. You know, we have hundreds of deals we've done, but there's been tens of thousands of transactions inside all those deals over the years. So we've been through a little bit. So fire away. Give us a question. We'd love to try and uh, try to stump us. So Portia said, so would you uh, bring the full amount or, or would you amount. finance the full amount? Yes. So again, it depends on your situation. Some lenders that you go to are going to require you to put maybe 20% down on the purchase price and 10% on the renovation costs. Although you can still use other people's money for that, it just depends on your cash position. If you don't have, if you've got, if you don't have twenty, thirty grand laying around to kind of get started, you don't have to have that. We didn't. When we started. We were eighty thousand dollars in credit card debt when we flipped our first house, and we had to find the money. So we actually went to a bank that offered one hundred percent financing back then. And but for the renovations, we used our credit cards, and we got creative with some of our contractors and paid them over time, uh, agreed, like we agreed in advance. So there's a lot of things you can do to get this deal done. And so um, the, I believe, you know, if you have some money, great. If you can finance the whole thing, finance the whole thing. Right now with our private lenders, we'll typically finance the purchase price and the renovation costs up front. We just, we have a strong track record and they've been with us for many years and they know that we're good for the money always. Um, they get a 10% return. They, you know, they are, they're, they're thrilled, right? We, we teach this in detail at the Home Flipping Workshop, too. Yeah. Which, by the way, I'll just let me know, just on a side note, got a little self-promo. Uh, I think ticket sales have closed. But we are having our, if somebody really wanted to come to our Home Flipping Workshop that starts tomorrow, it's three days, uh, that is, uh, you'd have to give us a private message because I think tickets have been closed down. So, um, good. So, listen, try and stop us. I'd love to have any questions. I see Kevin's on there. Thank you, Sharon, Sharon and Jan. And priceless moments. How about that? I don't know if that's your name or not, but it's a pretty cool uh, Chastity, screen name. Our daughter's name is Chastity with one T, so very similar. Yep. Nice. Very good. Oh, awesome. Uh, Marla, J Lisa Jackson. Great. A lot of folks in there. So good. So listen, guys, I had we had some questions that were DM'd <laughs> to us prior to this, and I just want to fire... Now, wait a minute. Don't laugh. Don't, you, can, you can laugh. Don't mock me on this, because I'm <laughs> going to be 52 soon, so... These are new. So Don't mock me. I'm old. A few years ago, I bought him some glasses, and he made me take them back to the store because he just refused to admit that he couldn't read. And I didn't finally, want to say I was he old. He finally broke down last month and got glasses. I don't like them, but I had to get them, so it is what it is. So at least I can see a little bit. All right. Oh wow, we're on we're on the my phone. I can see. Wow, look at that. Just people were people writing can you to read us. The questions? Yeah, good. So Katie asks, how do you find good deals? <clears throat> Again, loaded question. How do you find good deals? You definitely find. Um, off-market deals are the best ones to find if you're searching on the MLS, you're searching on public auction sites, they're there. But right now in this climate, all over the country, the markets are hot. I mean, things are just popping all the time. So, um, <coughs> no, I am blind when I take them off. So, it's, um, you want to look for good deals on off-market places. We encourage you to find motivated sellers. So, a motivated seller is someone that really has to sell their house. They've fallen behind in taxes. They've fallen behind their mortgage payment. There was a death. They inherited the house. They can't afford the taxes that are coming due because they inherited it. They just want to get their cash out of it. It needs work. They're embarrassed by it. Those are all motivated sellers. And those people that you want to find, you can you can do that by, and again, I can't go into everything, but at the workshop, we spend over like a, two hours on Friday morning going over this. But we go over how to do this. But you, you there's ways to find deals without using your own money and ways to do, spend money for advertising so people come to you, all right, different ways. I'll give you one example of each. The first one's called bird dogging. Bird dogging is how we found our first few deals. And we literally went to houses that had, uh, you can tell when a house is vacant, right? You can tell if, depending on where you live, what time of year it is, if, if summertime, grass is high, right? It's not mowed. Uh, the mailbox is loaded with papers and books and old phone books, which I don't know who's distributing phone books anymore, but 
Somebody still is, but you can see those that are piling up on the front step and they're covered in water or whatever. You can tell when a house is vacant. There's it, notes from the town on the windows. That's very common, right? Yeah. In the, in the winter, if you're somewhere it snows, you know, the driveway isn't plowed. Yeah. So you can do it very simply. Knock on the door. Probably nobody's there. Knock on the neighbor's doors. Believe it or not, they call them nosy neighbors for a reason. Neighbors know. Neighbors know things. So ask them questions. Just say, listen, I'm an investor in the area. I'm looking to, I, I look, I'm looking to renovate these houses to make them beautiful. Most, pe most neighbors love that. And almost always, neighbors know what happened. They know, they know something. Some neighbor knows. And sometimes neighbors are related. And sometimes they don't tell you right away, but you just pass your card. They won't give you the number usually, but you give them a card. Even your name piece of paper and say, I pay cash for houses, and here we go. And just start that process. And that's a, that's a way you can find out without, any, without spending any money. Another way you can do it to spending money is you can put bandit signs out. As, as annoying as those, those look, the we buy houses signs you see around town, they work. You put those in the ground and people will start making phone calls to you, right? Depends how many. The more you put out, the more calls you make. So there's one way I just gave you to not spend money and one way to spend money, all right? So that's it. Yeah, and I think that the thing that you really need to get good at, though, is is feeling confident about your decisions, too. Because I, I think that fear is what holds most people back. And mostly it's fear of, you know, what if I get into this and lose money? But we teach our students to evaluate the deal so that you're making a very um, educated and very, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Um, informed. Very calculated decision. Yeah, informed you know, decision. It, it, it really is a mathematical equation. Yep. And if you learn how to do that right, you can move forward with um, confidence. If you're moving forward in fear, it's hard to take that first step and actually make an offer on the house. Yeah. But if you feel really confident with your numbers and confident with your decision and confident with your, and, and, and the thing that does that is knowledge and education. So guy, if you're just joining us, uh, these are my new glasses because I'm getting old, I can't see anymore. So if you're just joining us, we're Glenn and Amber <laughs> and we're glad to have you here, thank you. If you have any questions, please try and stump us. Any questions about real estate investing you have, no questions, a dumb question, fire away, throw it out there, you know, put, put it down in the, uh, in the comments and we will answer those questions live. We do have some people that sent some DM questions in. They didn't want to ask live. So Jeff asks, what's considered a good deal? Jeff, any deal that you can make money on is a good deal. I don't care. You have to know many exit strategies, right? So you can wholesale a house. A wholesale is when you um, put a house in your contract and sell that contract, not the house, the contract to another investor for cash. That's a wholesale deal, right? If you can buy it cheap enough, you can make money doing that, okay? Um, you can make as little as, you know, five grand or a couple grand on that to five grand. Um, we just did one last week. We closed on it. It was $77,000. So you can do that. We never owned the house for a second, right? I'm going to put a little asterisk on that, though. You know, you don't necessarily want to do any deal that you make money on, though. We had a student one time that called Glenn up and was running a deal past him, and his profit okay, margin right. was, yeah. yeah. Why don't you talk about that for a minute? No, no, go ahead. No, yeah. Well, he talked to you, so you it was your story. Well, let me just refine what I said. Not what you can make money, what you can make the right amount of yeah, money on. Decide on your percentage that you want to make okay. on a deal. It's the risk versus reward. So on a wholesale deal, if you can make a couple thousand bucks and you're happy with that, fine. There's no risk there at a wholesale. If you're going to do a renovation, you want to shoot for 15 to 20% of the sale price as your profit. So if you sell a house for $100,000, you want to try and make, you know, fifteen dollars to $20,000 minimum on that deal, right? So I think that you're right. There's a, you want to look for a percentage amount. So that's important. Um, again, welcome to our, our uh, live uh, Q&A session here. Anybody has any questions? Nobody's trying to stump me for a minute, so come on. I want somebody to stump me. Give me some good questions. Fire away. Done lots of deals. Been through a lot of crazy stuff. And again, even if, it's not, even if you're brand new and you're not sure what to ask, I'm sure you're thinking about stuff. Thank you for the, the thumbs up. I like all those. We like seeing those fly up on the screen. Um, Jack, Jackie asked us, uh, how often do people skip inspections? I wouldn't. That's a unique question. It is. It's a good question, Jackie. So when you say skip inspections, let, what I think you mean is, I'm not sure if Jackie's live with us or not. She, she DM'd us. So might watch it after. But uh, when, when you write an offer, if you say there's no inspections, there's all cash, no inspections, what that means is you're willing to skip inspect, you're willing to forego because you've looked at it with your own two eyes and you decided that you're willing to take on the risk of that place. If you're brand new, I wouldn't do that. If you want to skip inspections legally on a contract, here's my, here's my advice to you, those of you guys who are listening. I would take an inspector with you, pay them in advance to go with you. 
Get chummy with a real estate, uh, with a with a home inspector. Bring them with you when you look at the house. It might cost you a few hundred bucks to have them walk through, but it's so worth it. And just have them give you the big things that you might not be seeing. You know, you know it needs new windows. You know if it needs a new roof, or maybe you don't know. But you don't. You may not know if it needs new. Paint. You may not, you may not notice the termite damage in the basement, or right. that that a beam was cut out that you know Shouldn't really have would have been structural. <laughs> yeah. So I would say just bring an inspector with you. If, you're, if you want to forego inspections on the contract, get chummy with an inspector. After a while, you'll know. Yeah, and there's some things that, though, even, you know, 14 years later after we've been doing this, there are some things that we still require inspections on. Like, we don't usually do home inspections, although we encourage anyone new to do that. Um, but, like, well, if there's a well, we always do an inspection on the well. If Ask us how we know that. Yeah, <laughs> we talk about that in our workshop. We've thought, we've taken some hits on that for forgetting to check to check the well. Yeah, if there's if there's a septic, um, you know, in our hometown we know about what a septic would cost, but other towns it can get quite expensive. So depending on the area that you're in, um, there are some some inspections you just always want to get no matter what. Yeah, good good uh, good point. So welcome guys. That's just new folks joining us. Welcome here. It's Glenn and Amber. We're here to answer any questions you have about real estate investing. We do it for about 30 minutes, got about six minutes left or so. So if you have any questions, feel free to fire away. We'd love to answer any questions you have about real estate investing or how we work together or anything about us you want to know. I don't know. We, we're an open book. We're, we're pretty happy, transparent. We're happy to share anything with you. So feel free to fire away. No no questions, a bad question. And again, just here to serve you guys and uh, give you some insight into the, the world of flippers. I want to address that last question too about people skipping inspections. That's, you know, we talked about if you're going to buy the house, whether or not you want to skip inspections. Um, however, if someone else is buying your house, they're probably going to get an inspection. Most loans, most bank loans are going to require that there's inspections. So um, don't, don't, don't give flippers a bad name. We, yeah. we that's what we yeah. preach is you know do quality work, do quality renovations, so that this industry has a good name to it. We don't want to be the used car salesman of of our home industry. So you know make make flippers proud. Peter asked uh, DM Wilson said, "What improvements do you do yourself to save money?" The answer, uh, Peter, is none. So yeah, talk about this. There's no you think you're saving money, but you don't. Yeah, and I. We had differences of opinion on this when we first started, and I quickly came around because I, I was of the school of thought, you know, if we're hiring contractors to do the work, then we're not going to make as much money. That's cutting into our profit margin. But what I soon came to realize was that, you know, especially if you're doing this on the side of an existing job, which most people do, they start out part-time doing it on the evenings and weekends, um, you can't be at the job site all day long. So the time that you spend holding that property and the holding costs that you pay with your loan amount, with your insurance with utilities and all of that stuff, that is going to more than um, cost you more than you would have if you just hired a contractor. Because what was gonna, what's going to take you, you know, six months to finish on the side would take a contracting crew, you know, four to six weeks to do. So you can take that same money, that same investing money and turn it over into more flips and way, make way more money in the long run than if you're doing the work yourself. If you, and the longer you hold a house, the more expensive, this is some gold nuggets we're giving you right now. The longer that you hold a house, the more expensive it is. You're paying taxes, you're paying your mortgage, you're paying your interest. I don't even care if you use your own money, you're not getting interest on because you're, the house costs money, utilities. And um, other costs and maintenance on the house, mowing the lawn and um, shoveling the driveway in the wintertime and freezing and prob all that kind of stuff, right? So it costs you money constantly when you are when you own a house. So the longer it takes, do it yourself always looks better on paper. But in reality, it's really not better. And it's painful, like physically painful, physically and mentally. Still a bad and, back. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, don't do that to yourself. The, the, what you need to be doing is still working on your real estate business while that deal's going on because you need to be looking for your next deal. Yeah. And if you're, you know, at the house doing all, you know, swinging the hammer yourself, you're not going to have time to go look for the next deal. Uh, two questions. Mike, Mike Boos, two questions. We'll probably wrap it up. There's two questions. So Nate has, uh, and this is the time, guys. If you have any questions, put them on there. We're going to fire through these, but uh, we're here to answer any questions you have about real estate investing. So fire away, okay? Uh, or any questions about anything, I guess, for that matter. So what do you know about wholesaling houses? Well, just so, so just a little bit. So so far this year, our company's done as of yesterday, one point one five million dollars in wholesale spreads on houses. So we know a little bit. So we'll probably wholesale about eighty or ninety deals this year, and uh, there's a lot of money to be made in wholesaling if you know how to do it. If you do it right, it's too much to get into 
uh, on this. We do go over that at our workshops in detail and, you know, keep hanging around us. We, we have a lot of uh, information we put out there, but we know a lot about wholesaling houses. We, we primarily, the funny part is, we primarily did um, only renovations for, for the first however many months or how many years of our career. And one day we stumbled on a wholesaling by accident. We bought a house and a woman called us. We actually closed on it. And the woman came to us and said, I want to give you, I want to buy the house from you. We're like, we just bought it. She goes, I know. I'll give you 10000 more than you paid for it. And, I, and we actually negotiated and wound up taking like fifteen or 16000 more than we paid for it. Never touched it. And I said, well, that was interesting. And then we got thinking about it. And I realized that wholesaling, the more I did, dug into it, I hired a coach. I hired a coach. We spent about thirty grand. I hired a coach that was doing it at a big level. And I said, I need some help getting myself in order because we're not above hiring coaches. We, we do that all the time. And we found a, a, a leader, industry leader. And that guy, um, he turned me down for coaching for about a year. And then I finally hired him and uh, I caught him in a moment of weakness. And we hired him on and we learned everything we didn't know. And we turned it around. Now our company does, you know, 80% wholesales. Uh, 10%, let's say, a year we buy our um, uh, renovations that we flip. And uh, the other 10% are buy and holds. We do short-term and long-term rentals, and we do a lot of Airbnb stuff and that kind of stuff, too. Uh, last question here is, uh, how are you feeling about the real estate market in 2021? I think it's going to stay on fire. Yeah, I mean, my crystal ball is broken right now, but I have to have it checked in the shop. But, we, you know, I, it's going to be hot for a little bit. It's hard to say. When the new administration takes over, it's going to be hard to say what happens. Industry leaders are saying that when the new administration starts, that things are going to slow down again. I hope they don't. I hope that they don't make a lot of changes to interest rates and make a lot of big changes there and slow things down. Um, if they have a lockdown again, I, you know, I, I don't exactly know. Uh, no one knows what's going to happen from year to year, especially in this year, right? It's crazy. Um, I would have thought by now we were going to be in a recession. I would have really thought that was going to happen. And I still think it's going to happen. Uh, it's just a matter of time. Because usually about every 10 years, the economy cycles and it does a reset. And so when that happens you know, then there's opportunity for us. There's always opportunity for real estate investors because there's always life, But right? even when that happens, it, it seems to be much harder hit in a lot of the bigger cities. You know, for, for those of you that are in, you know, regular America. Um, Suburbs. The, yeah, that you know, th those areas aren't typically as hard hit. Yeah, that's very true. Like where we were, we're not, we're not that, you know, there's a little bit of a hit, but not that hard hit. So, um, but who knows, All right? I got another question I see come in here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ed. What about houses that the bank owned because taxes weren't paid or, or paying those taxes on the house? I think what you're asking, Ed, is um, – so let me, let me ask this question. I think you're saying what about them? Can you buy them? I think that's probably what your question is. Can I buy a house that the bank owns? Yes, but you have to wait. You're going to have to wait um, for oh, – let me just scroll right back down to your question. i got some more questions coming in. You're going to have to wait for the bank to put it back on the market. As much as you want to try and call the bank directly, they won't take your phone call. No matter how hard you try, I'll tell you, I'm probably the most resourceful sucker I've ever met in my life. I will figure out anything, and I tried that for years, and even talking to presidents of banks and could not do it. They're it it has to go through their red tape. Yeah, it has to go through their system to, to get back out. Now, are paying taxes on that house? I think, Ed, what you're asking me is, can you buy a house and pay the back taxes? The answer is yes, if you catch it before it goes into foreclosure. Okay, so yes, if you get that house before it goes into foreclosure, you can pay the taxes current, but you have to work on a deal, you have to make a contract with the seller that you're going to buy that house and you're going to, at the closing table, you are going to bring those taxes current. So you can do it, okay, you can do it, and then you can own that house. It's a little, it's a little more to it than that, but the long and, long and short of it is yes, right? I saw some more questions come out here, so... Can you DM me info on, uh, you have on wholesaling? I'll tell you what, Nate, go right to our website. We have a Glenn and Amber, is it Glenn Amberson? Glenn and Amber com. Glenn and Amber com. Glenn and Amber com. That kind of give you an idea of uh, some ways you can follow us. And I believe our, we have a course called No Flip Flipping that's out there. We have a course on that that kind of explains everything. So that's there as well. Um, you can kind of check that out. So. Um, so guys, I think without any further ado, I hope you enjoyed today's session. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, give us some thumbs up, give us some love, give us something. That'd be great. And, um, I, uh, hope you enjoyed and learned something from us today and yeah. learned that I'm old and I have to wear glasses now. And be thinking about the questions you want to ask us next week. Yeah. Come back live. We'll be here next Thursday at five o'clock and happy to answer any questions you have about real estate investing or anything. And, uh, we will go from there. So thanks for being here, everybody. Any of you guys who are going to be at our workshop tomorrow, we'll see you live and, uh, we'll go from there. See you guys soon. See you later.